this series of videos, we've been going over the basics of building an app similar that does the Brick Breaker game. In this specific video, we are going to cover the fixes for our collision detection. Right? So we may notice that our collision detection works occasionally, but then on other times it doesn't work at all. Right? So we have to go through and think about the problems that we're having with our collision detection. So if we bring up our fancy diagram, we have a paddle and a ball, and the ball is hitting the right edge. So that's the third case. So we compare our X to make sure it's to the right of our top right X, which is true. And then our Y has to be between these points on the right. Okay, And that's true. And that would work in all of our ideal scenarios. But now our ball is moving, so that doesn't always measure up. First of all, the collision event occurs as soon as the ball collides. But the X is not going to be on top of this line. Right? So we actually need to compare this point, right? this small point to the right it's on the right line rather. So in order to do that we have to take our center point that is our X and Y and migrate the X to the left. Okay? The other thing we have a problem with is we're comparing directly to our line. And sometimes we get beyond those lines. Our ball kind of moves too quickly. So if our ball was moving one pixel at a time, we'd be okay. But due to the comparisons and that our ball is actually moving five pixels every 10 milliseconds, sometimes our ball moves farther than it should and it's no longer in the area we specified. So maybe our ball falls into a case where it's slightly over the line, right? We still should be bouncing in that case. It just happens on that time step, our ball moved past where we were checking for. So now we've seen, as we test our app, our ball continues to just move throughout and, and it ends up going through our paddle instead of bouncing off the paddle. So instead what we can do is define an inner paddle that is slightly smaller than the actual paddle. We'll say 5%. Right, we're going to say 5% fudge factor. We'll call that our fudge factor. So we're going to define procedures that return the right X, the left X, the top Y, and the bottom Y of this fudge factor rectangle. And we also have to fix our ball location in each of these lo parts, right? So we have to fix all of those adjustments. So in this case we're moving our Y down, in this case we're moving our Y, so this is a positive direction, this is a Y in the negative direction, and this is an X in the positive direction, our X value. Okay, so those are the things we need to implement. So we've started off and I've implemented a block so you can save time from watching me drag blocks around. 
and we simply have a procedure, like we said, with the notch in it, right? And we named it bar right x fudge, okay? So it's not quite the x on the right side, it's a, a fudge vector. And we need bar left, oops, duplicate. Bar left, x fudge. So in that case, we're going to take the top left point, uh, left x, and we're going to add, not subtract, five percent of our bar sprites width. Alright, so to to move in from the right, we subtracted five percent. To move in from the left, we added five percent. Okay? And then we're going to do the same for the top. So bar top y fudge. We're going to take the top left y and we're going to add 5% of the height this time. And then we are going to take the bar bottom y fudge and we're going to take the bottom left y and subtract 5% of the height. Okay, so those are the fudge procedures that will allow us to get the x and y values for these internal rectangles. Now the other problem we had was moving the center point, right? Actually, we want the point that is colliding, not the center point. Okay, so that's a simple subtraction in or addition of the x or y. So instead of, right, we were working with our case number three, we're going to replace our x value and compare it to our bar right x fudge, and we're going to subtract the radius of the ball. Right, so if we look at our diagram, we just need to move in this amount, which is one radius of the ball. Okay, so then we want to still use our x and y, or, or rather our normal y's. Right, so we're not going to do fudge factors for this, we're just only going to do the fudge vector for this one. All right, and we want to repeat those steps for the other side as well. So we're going to get the math block to add. We're going to take our ball and then we're going to add our radius. So we'll put that instead of our ball x for our left side case and instead of calling top left x we're going to call bar left x fudge okay so that will get us this case over here on the left side we get the fudge x value as well as moving the x from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle. All right, so that handles our left and right cases. Now for our top and bottom cases, we're going to add instead now to the y or subtract from the y, all right? So we can now grab our duplicate 
and duplicate. And so we're going to use the Y here instead. And if we look at our drawing, we notice that we have to add in the north case, in the number one case. Okay, so we have to add in this location. And we have to subtract in that location. Okay. So again, this fixes the Y to be on the edge of the ball. Right? So we're moving the Y all the way down to the edge of the ball, just like we moved the X before. All right, so now, okay, we're comparing not to our top left Y, we're just going to compare to our top Y fudge vector and our bottom Y fudge vector. All right, so now we've updated our blocks to use our fudge factor, and we might notice a little bit of clipping still, so we could change our fudge factor to smaller, maybe 1% instead of 5%, but we should now notice that our collisions are all working correctly. We see the bouncing in all of the cases that we have set up, so all four of the cases.